To create a mock-up in Photoshop, we need to first of all get ourselves into the shape tool. You want to right-click in here and get yourself the rectangular tool. From here, you want to left-click, drag this out, and get yourself a box that is around the same area as your surface of the product. From here, we can minimize this. We also want to go up to stroke. We want to get rid of the stroke and we want to fill the shape in with any color that you want. So I'm gonna go with a nice red color. From here, what we need to do is we need to go down to the shape, right click in here and convert this into a smart object. From here, you want to press the five key on your keyboard to lower the opacity down to 50%. And then we're going to press Control or Command and T. You want to right click in here and go down to Warp. And what this will do is it will allow us to warp this onto the product and it will create the effect, making it look like it is on the product itself. Now, sometimes you may run into certain problems like this, for example, where a straight line is just not going to cut it. So to fix this, all we need to do is hold Control or Command, and this will give you the option to create yourself an additional vertical and horizontal line. However, if we go closer to the edge, it will just give us a horizontal line only. So from here, you just simply want to left click, get yourself a horizontal line, and then left click onto this, drag this out and make sure it fits onto the edge as well. Once again, hold control, left click on here and get yourself another horizontal line. You want to have a look all the way around, make sure that all of the edges are on. So for example, this one as well, drag this one in. We're going to get ourselves one right about here and drag this one in as well. Once you're happy with the results and you're ready to save this, all you need to do is go up to the first tool and apply the changes. And then from here, you want to press zero on your keyboard to bring this back to 100%. And we're going to double left click on the layer to open this up. Now, of course, from here, you can create yourself the branding. You could do all of your designing and anything that you wanted to apply onto the product. So for the example of this video, I created a fake brand called Veggies. I'm going to simply drag this into Photoshop, apply it onto the canvas. And then once you're ready, you can then double left click to apply. Once you're happy with your results, go ahead and close this down and you want to make sure you click on yes. Now, of course, from here, we also need to fix up the pegs right at the top. So we can do this by simply pressing the five key on our keyboard. Once again, we're going to lower the opacity and we're just going to hold Alt scroll up to zoom in and we're going to fix up this area right here. So the simplest way to fix this is to go to the third tool down, right click in here and get yourself the polygonal lasso tool. With this tool, we're going to left click on the edge and get yourself a selection around the area you want it to select. So we're going to go around the peg right here. You want to go back to the very first one, left click to connect it all up. And then from here, you want to get yourself a mask on this layer. You also want to press Control or Command and I, and this will invert it. Same goes for the other one. Once again, get yourself a selection. You want to go back to the very first one, left click to connect it all up. And this time you want to get yourself the bucket tool. Make sure you're selecting a black color and then just simply fill this in. Press Control and D to deselect it. We want to once again, bring back the opacity. So put this back to 100%. Now at the moment, this looks great. However, it doesn't look as realistic. So to make this look more realistic, all we need to do is simply hide this layer. We're going to go back onto the background. And this time you want to go up to the object selection tool. In here, you want to simply hover over the object, get yourself a selection. Once it's selected, we're going to go ahead and press Control or Command and J. And you want to get yourself a copy of this one. 
You then want to move this one above the branding that you've just created. From here, you also want to press Control or Command and J two more times to get yourself two more copies. We're going to double left click on the first one and call this Shadows. You want to rename the middle one as the Midtones. And then the last one to Highlights. Once you've got yourself the three layers, you want to go back to the Shadows. Make sure you've set this one to Multiply. You want to set the Midtones to Linear Dodge add and then the last one to screen now that you've done that we can bring back the branding and this is going to give us an example of what it's going to look like and we're going to create this by hiding the highlights hiding the midtones and we're going to focus on the shadows first so with the shadows you want to left click on here and you want to go up to the adjustments and get yourself the levels with the levels, we're going to clip this onto the layer below so it doesn't affect anything else. And we're going to mess around with the sliders until we really bring out the dark shadows from this image right here. So your main goal is to simply focus on the shadows and we're going to set it to something like, let's say 56 for the first one. We then also want to set the other one to something like 1.12. And then the last one to 255. Once you're happy with the results, we can minimize this and we're going to unhide the midtones. We're going to select this one and then we're going to go back into the adjustments. And same as last time, get yourself the levels again. Once again, make sure you've clipped it on first and then we can start to readjust these settings. Starting off with the first one. The one on the left will allow us to play about with the lighting. So for this one, we're going to set it to something like 110. For the next one, we're going to bring this one down and we're going to set this one to 0.43. And then the last one to 246. You can then minimize this. And then finally, once again, unhide the highlights bring this one back, make sure you're selecting it and go back into the adjustments and you want to get yourself the levels one final time. In here, we're going to clip this on to the layer below and we're going to focus on the first one, which is going to be 36 or 37 in this case. The second one will be something like 0 0.18 and then the last one to 211. And then after that, we're going to close this down. And at the moment, you can see it really doesn't look that great. And that is because we can also adjust the opacity of it. So at the moment, it is a little bit too harsh. And we can correct this simply by lowering the shadows down to something like, let's say, 73%. We can lower the levels to 41 so they are not as harsh as they should be. We're going to have a look at the midtones. For this one, we're going to leave this one on normal. However, we will go onto the levels and set this one to 78. And then finally, for the highlights, we're going to leave this one on 100. And same goes for this one as well. Now, of course, the next thing to do is the side bit. And before we start to do that, we're going to select the top one. We're going to go all the way down, hold shift, left click on the bottom one of this one, and then get yourself a group layer. We're going to double left click on here, and we're going to call this front and then view. And there we go. We now have the front view of this product right here. So to do the side bit, we would once again, get ourselves back into the shape tool we would simply left click, drag this down. And then we're going to go back to the fill, get rid of the stroke, make sure we have filled this in. And then we're going to minimize this, go to the first tool, make sure that this one is above the front view, we're going to once again, right click on this layer and convert this into a smart object. We can then once again, press the five key on our keyboard. We're going to press control and T 
right click on here and warp this area. We're going to once again, drag this in. This one is going to be a little bit more difficult than before because it is a lot more awkward to work with. And there we go. Once you're happy with the results, we can then once again, go back to the first tool. So you don't have to worry about it going outside of the lines because we'll be correcting this by going down to the pen tool, right clicking here and get yourself the pen tool. Once you've got yourself the pen tool, we're going to go ahead and zoom in, have a look where the corners are. So we have one right about here. We're going to left click, create ourselves a straight line, or you can curve it just by holding it in. Hold Alt, left click on here, and then you just want to go around the edges, making sure that we've included this as well. You then want to go back to the very first one that you created, and then we're going to connect this up from here, and we're going to drag it out a little bit more just to curve it onto here, like so. So then once you've got yourself a full path connection, we're going to go up to selection, get yourself a selection of either zero, or you can even put it up to 2%, but we're just going to stick with zero, and we're going to go ahead and press OK. From here, all you need to do now is simply get yourself a mask on this layer, and there we go. We now have a much sharper result onto here. So then from here, we're going to press zero on our keyboard to bring this back to 100%. And then once again, double left click on here, and we can create ourselves the branding. Same as last time, I'm going to left click, drag this into Photoshop, apply it onto the canvas, double left click to apply, and then you want to close this down, go ahead and click on yes. And there we go. We now have the side view applied onto here. However, it does not look realistic at all. So we need to fix this by simply once again, getting ourselves a copy of the original. We can achieve this by holding control or command, left click on, on the mask that we've just created, and then select ourselves the background and you want to press control or command and J. With this new layer, we're going to move this one above the image that we've just created. And you want to get yourself two more copies of this one as well. Same as last time, we're just going to briefly call this one S for shadows, M for the midtones, and then H for the highlights. We're going to set the first one to multiply, set the middle one to linear dodge add, and then the last one to screen. From here, we're going to hide the top ones, go back onto the shadow layer, get ourselves the adjustments and get yourself the levels. We're going to set the first one to something like 12, let's say. And then the middle one will allow us to bring back the original image, as you can see. So with this one, we we'll want to set it to something like 1.93, because this is what will enhance the original. And then the last one to something like 104. Now, all of these are responsible for the contrast, the lighting, and overall the darkness of a specific object. And as you can see at the moment, this looks a lot better. So then we're going to minimize this and we're going to go onto the midtones, unhide this one. You want to go back into the adjustments, get yourself the levels. And with this one, we're going to clip it on to the midtones. For this one, we're going to set it to something like, let's say 18 for the first one. We're going to set the middle one to 1.18 and then the last one to 200. You can then minimize this and then finally go back to the very first one or the highlights, unhide this one, go into the adjustments, get yourself the levels, we're going to clip this onto the layer below and we're going to start on the first one, which is going to be something like, let's say two. The next one to be 0 
and then we'll leave the last one on 255. Once you've done that, you can then minimize this and there we go. We now have the side view included as well. From here, we're going to once again, hold shift, scroll all the way down, go back to the very first one and get yourself a group layer on this one as well. We're going to rename this one to side view and there we go. We now have the front view and the side view. So that is pretty much it. That's how you create a product mock-up in Photoshop.